Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that. How can you create minimalistic and smart looking card visualizations in Power BI? Let's start. All right, I'm in Power BI and that's where I have loaded a few tables, created a few measures and on top of those measures, I will start to create cards. Let's just take a look at the default cards that get created and what is it that we can actually do to make the cards look minimal, slick and clean. So I'm actually going to go ahead and create a card visual on top of that card visual. I'll actually drag one of my measures, which is nothing but my total sales measure. Now, once you do that, you can see that this is pretty large number. And if you just maybe copy paste a few of these measures and put them out on the screen, your entire real estate is going to get occupied and clogged and you would not have more space to create more visuals, more tables and things like that. So I want this number to be prominent. Somebody should be able to take a look at it. They should actually grab attention, but they should also be minimal and slick. So what I can actually do is I can actually click on the particular uh, card right here and I'll start to play with the formatting, especially the font size is something that I'll, I'll start to play with. So I'm actually going to click here. I'm going to go to the format panel and in the data label, the first thing that I do is I change the size from 45 to 15. Yes, 15, not 30, not 36 or 40, just 15. Now you might believe that 15 is far too small a size. Uh, what you can actually do is change the type of the font that you're using to Arial Black and it'll start to look prominent once again. So right now the font is DIN. I can just change that to Arial Black and it starts to nearly come up to a level where it starts to grab more attention off the screen. Anyways, take a look. So we have total sales here and maybe I can just also change the font of total sales. It's a little too large. Go in the category and change the font to maybe nine. I think that sounds okay. What I also generally do is if you have a color scheme that you tend to follow in your organization, you can also have the same color for the card and as well as the same color for the label as well. So I can just go ahead and say that the label is going to be blue. Let's just say if that is the theme that I'm trying to follow. And the card is also going to be blue. This is actually going to bring consistency in the way that you format the particular cards. Now, if you only did that much, it still is a good looking minimal card. But what you can also do is to make it a little more pretty. You can also play around with a little bit of borders and shadows. So let me just show you. So I click on the card, then I actually go over to the format panel once again. In the format panel, let's just go over to the border and activate the border. If I activate the border, it gives you a black, dirty looking border, which I certainly don't want. I want to create a, like a minimal border. So I click on the card. I just go over to the format on the border. I can say, hey, the color of the border is going to be, let's say, uh, extreme light shade of gray. Uh, and the radius is going to be, let's say, five points rounded. And it actually gives you a little rounding uh, curved edges that looks smooth and looks slick. The other thing that I can actually do is add a little bit of shadow, which gives a slightly more perspective to the card, gives it more importance to the card. So take a look, I can actually activate the shadow, but once I activate the shadow, I believe that the shadow is a little too much. Why? Because the shadow occupies a lot of space. And then if you have a lot of cards being uh, kept adjacent to one another, you would not have that many space and it starts to look cluttered because the shadow is a little too dark. So let's just create a minimal looking shadow. I'm actually going to go over to the shadow once again. In the shadow, what I'm actually going to do is, first of all, I am going to create a custom shadow. So I have something like a preset and the preset is going to be custom. Once I do that, I get all these options to customize the shadow. The size of the shadow is going to be not three, but one. Uh, the blurring can be about seven. The angle of the shadow will not be, let's say 45, it can be 25. I'm just trying to reduce everything uh, to nearly half. Distance of the shadow is nearly 10 points. I can just maybe say three points or two points, perhaps even two points. And the transparency is something that I can increase to about 80%. And the other thing that I can do is that it still looks pretty black at the back and I can change the color of the shadow from a dark black to maybe a lighter shade of gray, maybe this one. And the card actually looks pretty slick and clean and gives a little perspective for the card as well. And you can place these cards on top of your panel right here. Now, the other thing that I generally have seen while people are designing the reports in Power BI is that they'll have a lot of card cluttered on the screen on the top. Generally, I tend to design a panel and in the panel, I keep all my cards. All right, here is a quick demo of the panel that I just spoke about. In the panel, you can see that I have created the title on the left hand side and I have a few slices on the top. And these slices could have been placed in the filter as well, but for now, maybe these are important slices and I want these slices to stay on the screen. Maybe they are important for the user. And 
The minimal cards that I have been designing, once these cards are placed on top of the panel, they look more organized and neat. Because the cards had very minimal formatting, which is the very light border and the very light shadow, the cards tend to stand out on top of the panel and they look try to look like they have a bevel effect. And the way to create this panel is really simple. All that you do is you go to the insert tab. In the insert tab, you maybe make a text box. Once you actually make a text box, the only thing that you have to do is write some text. In my case, I have written some sales dashboard right here and color the panel as something. Let maybe uh, go to the background and give it like a gray color or something. And the panel tends to have a little color. And on top of this panel, you can add your uh, slicers, you can add your cards and they will actually stand out pretty well. All right, you will almost always fall into the scenario where you have a panel, but in the panel, you have to place too many cards because there are too many things that the user actually wants to see. So in that scenario, you can see that I have more number of cards that I had it on page number one. And the thing that I have done to be able to make my cards look neat and clean is that I have removed any kind of formatting, which was on the borders and on the shadow. Because if I had too many borders and too many shadows right here for every single card, the panel would have been cluttered and it would uh, not really look very nice. But the other thing that I have done is, to the panel itself, I have given a very, very brief shadow to the panel itself, to the text box itself, and a little outline as well, so that the entire panel stands out, but there is no very cluttered formatting for every single card as well. I still have some space, maybe I can just add one or two more cards, but this actually looks pretty neat and pretty clean. All right, two more parting thoughts about cards and design just in general. One is that you can start to explore conditional formatting of the cards and change the color of the card depending upon how the value of the card is changing. It's a very simple tax that you'd have to write, attach that to the conditional formatting color of the card, and this would actually change the color of the card visual depending upon how the value is changing. The other bigger principle that I also tend to follow for myself is that I try to go absolutely minimal in terms of design whenever I'm trying to build a Power BI report. A report that is absolutely minimal in design and has a lot of analytical value is going to almost outdo any Power BI report that is actually filled with design and has very little analytical value. All right, that was all about designing minimalistic and smart looking cards in Power BI. If there is something that you do to your cards to make them absolutely minimal, clean and classy, why don't you actually drop in a comment and I'll be glad to take a look at that. Even if you have any questions, please feel free to drop in a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses. If you're starting out and you need help with DAX or Power Query to learn things right from scratch, the fundamentals first, and then proceed on to solving more sophisticated, more complicated problems, I would highly suggest that you take a look at my courses. It's gonna be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye.